Hey guys, Matthew, and welcome to the first official episode of the Casual Exile series. Today we are going to be looking at pre-league preparation and choosing a league, uh, sorry, choosing a build based on your favorite aspect of the game. Now that being said, uh, the league just started, so clearly we are not in a pre-league preparation situation, but we are still going to be looking at how uh, and what to look for when you're going into a new build. Uh, especially if it's pre-league, but this is also going to apply if you were to look for a new build right now. And obviously, based on your favorite aspect of this game, is kind of meh when it comes to more casual players and of course newer players, because most of you guys, I feel, don't actually uh, have any real experience with a lot of the end game content, right? Uh, a lot of the super end games, so your favorite aspect of the game is whatever you actually have encountered, and so far, for anybody who has even yet to kill Cyrus and stuff like that, it's probably pretty much just mapping. So that's mostly what we're going to be uh, looking at. All right, before I start going into how to actually go with your preparation and choosing a build, though, there's two different things I want to mention. All right. And if you take anything out of this video, it should be those two tips. The first tip is to stick to one character. Now, I know for a fact that nobody wants to play one build for three months. Uh, you know, they want to be able to experience all the myriad of different builds that PoE has to offer and all that. But that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about your league start. You should stick to one build, okay? Because uh, one of the biggest problems that I'm seeing with people uh, and with the coaching that I've done with certain, certain people is like, I'll first tell them to let me have a look at how many characters they're men in the league. And for example, just last week, I was talking to a guy and already a month into the league, he had, I think it was five characters uh, in the early level 80s, which is pretty much like somewhat in the uh, yellow map area. And he was just hard stuck there, unable to actually get into those T16s, unable to get to Cyrus, unable to get to the end game, which is where you start making money. So he would just make a new character, spend whatever little currency he had made on his last character getting to that point, right? And then... And then actually, once he would get to that same exact sticking point again, somewhere in mid-yellow maps, he would be like, okay, well, my character is not unable to progress, so I'm just going to make a new one, because clearly this build sucks, right? And I'm not even talking about somebody who's a super casual player. I'm talking somebody who's playing multiple hours per day, but never still never reaching anywhere near the end game because of this plague of just always respecking. all right? So this is the first tip that I want you guys to, 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 to really, really focus on and remember. Stick to one build until you hit the true end game of PoE, until you've killed Cyrus, you're in T16 maps comfortably, you know, you can do your boss killing or whatever other thing you're, you've decided to do with your build. Stick to that one build, farm some currency on that build, and then reroll a new character or respec your current character, whatever, into whatever you're going to be wanting to play for your end game build. But your league starter should only be one build and it should take you from the beginning of the game all the way up to somewhere in the mid-level 90s or whatever, early level 90s, in T16 maps, you've downed Cyrus or whatever your goal is. So if for, for you, it's about Shaper and Uber Elder or whatever. You've killed the bosses you've got to kill. You've unlocked the new Atlas skill trees in the regions that you wanted to unlock it. And now you're ready to reroll into whatever is going to be your map juicer or whatever that is, right? which is then going to allow you to farm significantly more currency going forward. Now, the next step, which goes hand in hand with the first one, which is obviously to not reroll, is going to be don't try to make your own build. Now, I know that it sucks to hear that because obviously Path of Exile is all about, you know, customizing and making builds with this crazy, you know, skill tree that we have available to us and all these different skill gems and different supports and all that and try to make some weird stuff actually work. Right, I get it, but if you're a casual player, and if you're a new player, and if you actually care about having a, an actual successful league, be it whatever that means for you, reaching, you know, level 90, or killing Cyrus, or, you know, making, having your first headhunter, whatever it is, you're going to need to actually stop trying to reinvent the wheel, and trust in the people who have gone through the same thing you're going through, and actually take their advice, just copy paste their builds you know they're going to work and you know they're going to get you to where you want to be much much faster now if you don't care at all about you know any of reaching the end game and any of that stuff then you probably shouldn't be watching this video uh and you 
probably don't even care about how to prepare for a league or anything like that. Um, and go have fun, you know, make those double strike witch builds that get stuck in Act 3. I don't care. If that's what you enjoy, in the end, it's just a game. And that's going to be my third tip. It's just a game. And whatever you enjoy is up to you, right? So don't let other people tell you that playing this build is going to be better than that build uh, f for whatever reason, right? If you're enjoying what you're doing, that's all what it's about. If you don't care about currency, you don't care about currency. If you don't care about ever reaching the end game, you don't care, right? Have fun with it. It's a video game. It's supposed to be relaxing. It's supposed to be fun, all right? Now that I've gone through the introduction, let's get into actual uh, pre-league preparation and choosing a build. There's only a few different things I want to talk about because we're going to be going more in depth about path of building later on in the series um, and how to, you know, do things like scaling damage, scaling def or stacking defensive layers, uh, reach, like stuff like that. We are going to go uh, through that much later in the series because I don't think that's something that casual players or newer players should really do. Again, like I said, don't try to make your own build, just copy someone else's. So what I want to talk about, though, in regards to path of building, and this is going to be a necessary part of your experience in PoE, in Path of Exile, learning how to actually use path of building and, um, and uh, yeah, having it installed on your computer is going to be the first thing. So I'll have a link to path of building, uh, you know, com community fork, which is the one that I recommend using, uh, the one that you should use anyways, um, in the description of the video. And uh, let's get right into the first thing I want to talk about. And that's whenever you look into a build, right? Whenever you look into a build guide, uh, somebody tell you like making one of your favorite content creators or whatever, uh, showing you what they're going to be league starting with and whether it's a good league start build or not. There's going to be a million of those in a brand new league, like a, month, uh, a, a week before a league. You're going to see a trillion different videos about so many to content creators. And what I want you to pay attention to is the items that they have listed here, right? So if I looked at a, a build that looks something like this, now obviously this is not a very uh, League Start friendly build. Uh, it's pretty obvious, right? That it's not a League Start friendly build. But there are some cases where it's a lot more uh, subtle that it's not going to be a very good League Starter build, despite the fact that the person who is making the build or whatever might make it seem like it's going to be a League Starter friendly build. So let me give you guys an example. Now, I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. This is completely, this is something that might have never happened in any build ever, but it's just an example uh, because right now, one of the very uh, meta build, I guess you could say, is Bleed Bow Gladiator. Now, one of the items that I don't know if it's actually necessary. But what I know is that I've seen this, um, a lot of people tell me, oh, I can't afford this item, and I'm talking about a Salem. So, let's say you were to look up a YouTube video, and it's a Bleed Bow Gladiator, and the guy's showing you clips of killing these endgame bosses, and then he's like, okay, it works on a tabula, you really don't need much. And let's say at some point, you look at, you open up the POB, and you see this item called a Salem. And maybe in his video, the content creator is like, yeah, Salem is a, you know, 5C item. And, and this video is made just before a league starts, so if you were to look at the price of a Salem around the end of a league, you would see that indeed, he wouldn't be lying to you. It would be a 5C item. Now, the only problem is that let's say a Salem is actually a mandatory item to the build to make it even function. You would see that a Salem in the first days of a league is actually 100 times more expensive than the 5 chaos that was advertised in the video. Now, again, I don't know if this has ever happened. I'm just giving you guys the tools to make sure that when you do, uh, when you are out there looking for a league starter build, it doesn't have any of those items that are actually required to make the build work that actually happen to be significantly more expensive even just days into a league. So the best tool for that is going to be one that I'll also have listed in the description of the video. It's called PoE Antiquary. Now PoE Antiquary allows you to see the price of any item in the game at any point in time in past leagues. This gives you a very good understanding of the supply and the demand of these items and what you can expect to be paying. Now of course the meta is definitely going to have an effect on these prices, but uh, it's still going to give you a much better idea than to just going in blind and not knowing, you know, if this if this build is re recommending to get an obliteration wand, is obliteration wand a 1C item on the first day of a league or is it a 30C item, right? It's very important to know these things when it comes to a league starter, a league starter build. Very, very important. 
So again, this tool, PoE Antiquary, the way that it works is that you'll just choose a whatever build, uh, whatever league. So the last league was Heist, right? And then we would look at whatever the item is. So probably under, for example, uh, Armor. And then if we were to look at a Salem, we would just search for a Salem. It's that simple. And we open it up. And we have the price in both Exalts and Chaos. And uh, as the league goes on, like the days uh, and the weeks, and of course the price. So we would see that in Heist League, a Salem was 10 Exalt on the first day of a league. Absolutely not league start friendly item, right? So this is going to apply to a lot of different item. Let's say the let's say you have a dying sun, right? Dying sun is a pretty cheap item as we go later and later into a league. But if you look at dying sun at the start of a league, it's definitely not a, a, a league start friendly item. And if it's actually a necessary item, you don't want to be paying or needing to pay a, to buy a 3x flask on the first day of a league for your build to even work. Now, dying sun is not a very good example. Um, but you know, there's some items that are absolutely necessary for builds that make or break a build, and the price of those items is what I want you to get you guys to pay really close attention to. All right, so now, otherwise, other than the items, the other thing is uh, the config and the skills. Now, this is a little bit more advanced because if you're newer to the game or just a casual, you're not you might not be too accustomed to configuration and skills in POB, but let's just put it that way. It's very, very, very easy to make a build look significantly better than it is through just ticking boxes, right? So if we take a look at my actual league starter uh, for the uh, the uh, 3.13 league, I was all about Bladefall Blade Blast, which by the way, I absolutely loved. It got me to the red maps that I wanted to be in uh, with absolutely no problem, but at that point, starting to be a little bit squishy but anyways i really really like that build and i could highly recommend it uh it was some of the smoothest leveling i've ever had and the damage is absolutely insane so let's just take it my build for example let's just go ahead and turn this down to a much more uh, league start friendly so we're gonna look at a five link um which we are going to uh remove intensify stacks all right so let's look at my own league starter for example at level 90 it would do 1.7 million damage on a five link, right? Now, this is non-fluff DPS sitting in your hideout. You haven't done a single thing uh, type of DPS. Now, let's have a look and show you guys how stupidly easy it is to make this build look like the godliest build you've ever seen, right? First things first, we pop on Val Righteous Fire. Our damage goes up by like uh, one fourth. Uh, we go ahead and tune up some Frenzy Charges, which we do not have access to in the build. We go ahead and put Ignited and Chilled, um, which we actually don't have on this build. But for example, if you had a Cinder Swallow, uh, that would give you another 10% damage if the enemy is ignited. But you could tick on that box, even if you have no fire damage on the build whatsoever, to make it seem like it does 10% extra damage that it really shouldn't be doing. Uh, you could even put like Shocked, whatever. Like These boxes are very important. Now, again, let's go ahead and do Maximum Effect. Let's go ahead and put this in Blood Stance with three Intensify stacks with a Banner Planet at 50 stages. Um, and uh, what else? Let's go ahead and... Oh, I think that's it. Right? We went from 1.7 million damage sitting in your hideout to 6.3 million, right? We, like, over tripled the build. We took a build that was already a good build that looked good on paper, and we made it look like an absolute god-tier build just by ticking some boxes which we actually don't really have access to, right? We don't have access to Frenzy Charge when we're killing Cyrus. We definitely don't have access to uh, Val Righteous Fire when we're killing instance-based bosses, right? It's very important to pay attention to these boxes. And now I know that, again, for a newer player, a casual player, understanding these different skills and what they do and understanding the conf configuration, what you actually have access to and what you don't have access to is not that easy. Now... Later on in the series, I'll actually be talking about how to troubleshoot a path of building, how, you know, I'll be basically doing an, a guide on path of building as a whole, but this is not this video. So instead, what I'll be doing is um, when it comes to choosing for a, a new build, right, or a good league, league starter build, what I'm going to recommend that you guys do is instead of looking at softcore trade league players such as myself and their build guides not saying that my build guides are bad or that any other trade league solo self, uh, sorry softcore players are bad i'm not saying all their builds are bad but 
If you're a newer player or a casual player, one very easy way to make sure that you never run into issues when it comes to gearing or requiring expensive uniques or even uh, you know, these path of building numbers being absolutely fake, if you want to put it that way, the easiest way to prevent all of these issues is just going to be to follow guides based on solo self-found hardcore players instead. Now, why is that? Well, clearly, if they're playing solo self-found, there's never going to be any items in their League Starter builds um, that are not going to be attainable, right? They're going to be getting these items in solo self-found. There's no way you shouldn't be able to get them in Trade League. Nobody's going to put an Asylum in a League Start uh, build for solo self-found hardcore. You're never going to see that. It's not going to be a thing. But... People are going to put a lot of random crappy rares, and those are completely something that you can get by yourself. Somewhere deeper into the series, we'll talk about filters, rares, things, you know, how to value an item, stuff like that, but that's going to be for much later on. Uh, so, otherwise, they're playing hardcore. The advantage of following a build as somebody who's playing hardcore is that you know that they're going to be layering defenses after layering, uh, like one layer of defense after another, which means that you don't need to worry about you know my build sucks i keep dying i'm dying four times every time in like a t7 map that's never going to happen because these players know what they're doing and the builds that they're making are made to be sturdy clearly they're playing hardcore if they die one time their character is gone they want their builds to be very very tanky now of course the cost of these builds is typically going to be clear speed uh, and that is just something that you need to accept that you might clear, uh, you know, maps a little bit slower than your friend playing his favorite streamer Zumi build, but he's dying three, four times every single map and he's struggling with gearing his character. You, on the other hand, are going a little bit slower, but you're winning the race by going slow and steady with a build that is both sturdy, does plenty enough damage to reach the end game. Again, there's no reason for solo cell phone hardcore players to make builds um, that that can't reach the end game, right? Their only goal on their builds is to reach the end game. There's no reason for them to farm currency. They play. They don't play trade league. There's no reason for them to do anything else than make builds that are designed to reach the end game and potentially reach level 100. So that is going to be my best tip when it comes to choosing a build uh, for. Uh, for league start or just overall if you're a newer player or a, uh, a casual player you're going to 100 get a build that is going to function on garbage gear that is going to work all the way up to the very end game and not run into any issues so if you're not aware of the hardcore solo self found uh you know community any of that you don't have to worry uh what i'll do in this video sorry, is I will go ahead and uh, link a bunch of different solo self-found hardcore players. Now, a bunch of them are going to be community favorites, so I'm sure you'll have heard of them, the people like Steel Mage and Zizarin and whatnot. But those are the kind of builds that I would highly recommend you follow because then you're not going to fall into this trap of fake DPS because they're ticking too many boxes or fake, uh, you know, survivability numbers through ticking things like Val skills, like, you know, just turning on Valgrace in any build is going to nearly double or triple the actual uh, effective health pool that the build has uh, down here, right? Just that alone, if it's not an already uh, you know dodge-based build, is going to double and triple what seems to be uh, defensive layers. But that is not something that you'll see in those builds because those people, uh, like again, are based on layers of defense after layers of defense damage comes second which is one of the most important thing that people tend to forget damage is not your main focus on any build unless you're trying to make like a five chaos bossing build then you care about only damage and zo defense but for most players especially casual and new players uh, rushing to elder uber elder is something that they, they couldn't even fathom so what they want is a very um you know good build tanky build fast enough build but especially a very consistent build so that's pretty much all i have for this video before i go though i want to say a huge thank you to my supporters johnny michael kluzi zirashi luro gaikona jw player scott justin alex ollie matt kevin hayden bitizen and axel as well of course anybody else who wishes to remain anonymous and anybody else who has supported me in the past i really hope that this video is going to help some of you guys make better decisions when it comes to uh choosing your league start builds and of course whenever you do choose your league start build stick to it 
And whenever you actually encounter some issues with those builds, later on in the series, I'll be explaining how to troubleshoot a build so we'll be able to get past those issues so that you don't have to feel like, oh, I need to reroll. This build sucks. On that note, that'll be Matthew signing out. Until next one, hopefully you guys enjoyed. And uh, yeah, that'll be, that'll be it for me. Peace.